Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It's good to be back. Uh, some good news, some exciting news. It looks like uh, big time boxing, and not just boxing, I mean big time, big time mega fights are going to return sooner rather than later. Uh, two big fights to get into. Uh, the first one looks like it's a go for September, uh, and that is for the, we'll get into it, we'll call it the Unified. Um, lightweight title, even though that's not really true, between Vasil Lomachenko and Tiafimo Lopez. Uh, Lopez has the IBF belt. Um, Loma has the other one. Uh, Tiafimo has the IBF belt. Loma has the other ones, kind of. Uh, remember, they, they took his WBC belt um, and gave him the franchise belt, and now Devin Haney has the WBC belt. I don't really know what to make of that. Um, I, <laughs> Look, if Tiafimo wins, is he the undefeated, uh, undisputed champ? If if Loma wins, is he the undisputed champ, or does he have to go beat Haney to get his belt back that they took from him and replace it with – look, the WBC is a joke right now. Um, I don't even know what to say about that or, or what to make of it, but it's a, it's, it's a unification fight. Um, that, that we know. It's a fight between the two best lightweights in the world. Um, that much we do know. Um, but besides that, um, is it for the undisputed belt? That, that much is debated. Look, here's what else we know. Two best lightweights, and it's going to be a great fight. We're going to get a lot of different opinions. Uh, Tiafimo Lopez's last performance uh, against Richard Come, a fight I picked Come to win in. I thought it was too soon for Tiafimo. Uh, it was a spectacular, spectacular performance. And there's going to be people picking Tiafimo. He is so explosive and so young and so talented. The, the, the speed, the reflexes. I mean, I'm not saying he's Roy Jones Jr., but there's something Roy Jones Jr.-esque about his offensive uh, power, speed, and explosiveness. Um, there's a lot to him. This, he's gonna be, I, I would imagine when this fight is announced, and it looks like it's going to be announced for September in Madison Square Garden. Um, and they're looking to hopefully do it in front of 2,000 fans and space them out. That would be great for Lopez. It's uh, kind of Lopez's home city, right? The kid's from Brooklyn. I know he lived in Florida and other stuff. Um, but this would kind of be a homecoming fight for him, kind of in front of his home city. It would be his star-making performance. I hope they put this on ESPN. If he wins, boxing's got a new star. Like, TFU has got the star person. He's got the star skills. He's got the star trash talk. TFU Lopez is a star. He's boxing's next superstar. Right, but is this his moment or is it too soon? Right, like Canelo for Floyd in Canelo was boxing's next superstar, but he wasn't ready for a guy like Floyd. And I'm not comparing Loma to Floyd, right? So if y'all out there saying Loma's not, Loma's not Floyd, he's not. He's not even close. Pro, you know, uh, lightweight Floyd destroys lightweight Loma. Okay, that being said, Loma's a great fighter. Loma's a, a pound for pound top three guy in the sport. Um, is this time for the changing of the guard? Does T. Fima Lopez? Come up and uh, surpass Lomachenko. Is, is it TFMO time? Is this boxing's new era? Is, is, is it out with the old and in with the TFMO? Is it, is it TFMO Lopez time? There's going to be a lot. And it's tempting to pick that. It, it really is. He's so explosive and so powerful and so strong and so athletic and so big. He's going to be massively bigger. In the ring, then Lomachenko, who I always thought was a featherweight, who was fighting at 130, now fighting at 135. So many four guys like Linares, Luke Campbell, those guys are sizably bigger than him. Um, and, and Tiafimo Lopez, and so is Haney, so is Ryan Garcia. Those guys are monsters at 135. Um, I'm still leaning towards Lopez. I'm uh, leaning towards uh, Lomachenko. I still think the Matrix has enough love. And this is going to be a great fight. Um, Lopez is going to have moments. He's going to rock him. Look, 
Loma has not been, outside of the, the million dollar crawler fight, he has not been that dominant at 135, right? He, he was in a war with Pedraza. He got dropped by Linares. You know, uh, Luke Campbell took rounds from him. He, he's done really well. He's passed all the tests. He's passed with flying colors. But he hasn't been the same next level dominant that we saw about 126 and 130, right? He's in his third weight class now. He's not as dominant in this weight class as he was the others. And, and the competition is catching up to him. Is Lopez a bridge too far? He could be. Lopez is a far better athlete than Luke Campbell. He's a far better uh, – he's got far, far more power and, and much quicker than a Pedraza. Lenars is a really good fighter too. Um, and I think Lenars is going to beat Ryan Garcia if that fight does happen. But this is a great fight. And I, I Look, Lomas not old. He's 32, I believe. He's not that old. It's not like he's totally washed. He's not 36. He's 32. I think there's enough left in the tank that Loma gets past this. I think it's a great fight. I think it's a fight where Loma could be dropped again, right? Like he, Lopez is that explosive with both hands. Um, it's going to be the toughest fight of Loma's, you know, career the last five years since whenever the uh, Salido fight was. This, this is going to be the toughest fight for him. This is a, a kind of a 50-50 fight where I think the old professor has enough brains. And ring generalship and, and ring IQ just to do just enough to eke out a very close decision. But this is a great fight. This is a 50-50 fight. Uh, let me know what y'all think. Um, I, I know Lopez is going to be the fan favorite. There's going to be a lot of guys um, who want to pick TFU because of his last performance. And, and again, Lopez looked human at 135. Um, so there's going to be a lot of y'all that want to want to pick Lopez. And I'm fine with that. Do you think Lopez could do this? I think Lopez is boxing's next superstar, too. And I, I think he loses, but I think he loses in such a spectacular fight that it doesn't hurt him, and then he'll be right back. You know, and he'll have fights with Haney. He'll have fights with Ryan Garcia, Hatton Tana, and all those guys at 130, Tank Davis, and all those big names at 135. And I, I want to put this out there. Tank Davis is supposed to be fighting Santa Cruz at 130. He ain't making 130. We know that right now. He may come in 133, 130, but he ain't making 130. Come on. He missed 135. It took him the two hours almost to get back and make the weight. He, Tank Davis ain't making 130. He's a lightweight moving forward. Um, but those are all fights that I, I think he could win, and I, I think there may come a time where he could beat Loma in the not-so-distant future. But I, I think if they do it in September, Loma's still young enough where he's going to have just enough to, you know, just enough to tame the young stud. Um, he's going to have just enough savvy to win this fight. But it's a great fight, and uh, I, I don't have a problem with anyone picking either fighter. I mean, it's, it's that close of a fight. And the fight that I'm really excited for, the boxing junkie fight, the um, the hardcore the, the hardcore dream fight, uh, Kosei Tanaka versus Kazaoka. This is going to be a barn burner. Uh, this, <laughs> I, I, was, I went back today, um, and, and I went back and – to their fight. Uh, Tanaka fights. I think I came to my decision, but l let's get let's get into it. Let's break it down a little bit. Uh, Tanaka has excellent footwork. He's creates space. He uses that space. He's got excellent footwork and excellent spacing. He controls range really, really well. He's a powerful force, right? He's kind of like Triple G or uh, so rung beside uh, of this weight class. Um, he's not going to be undersized. I know he's moving up from 112, to, uh, but he's not going to be undersized. He has to be able to walk uh, Ioka down. If he can, he's going to lose, right? If he can walk him down and control that range and, and pick him apart at mid range, he's, he's going to have the field day. Ioka's going to have the slip punches. He's going to have the slip punches better than he did in the uh, fight with. Um, I'm I'm told I'm totally Aston Palikta. He's, he's on the wall over my shoulder. With Aston Palikta, he's gonna have to pick slip shots better than any can, right? Um, Ioka can fight coming backwards, coming forwards, and he can fight in the mid range. Ioka has more gears. Ioka is a master boxer. Does he have the power and the strength that Tanaka has? No. So this is gonna be another great fight. On paper, Tanaka should win this fight. But again, I, I think Ioka, there's more gears to Ioka. He has a plan B and a plan C. Um, he can stay in the mid-range 
and outbox Tanaka, who doesn't jab enough. Tanaka does not jab enough. He doesn't let his hands go enough. And if you put pressure on him, if he throws the combinations on him, you can get Tanaka to shell up. And that's what he's going to have to do. Look, not going to – Ioka did knock out uh, Palikta. So, look, he can hit. I, I think Ioka – like, I just compared Tanaka to Triple G um, or, or Sorang Vasaga, you know, a, a sharper Miguel Bichel. Um Ioka is like a Marquez. He is a master boxer with, you know, who, who's not lightning fast. Right? He's not lightning quick. He's he's just really smart, really skilled, really technically sound, and it does so many things well. Right? Like you can't really put your finger on what made Marquez great, other than that he was great. His timing, all those little things, like everything that you, you crashed in the gym, and he mastered all of that. Um, Ioka kind of has that. And for that reason, I'm, I'm taking Ioka to win a decision. And uh, I, I think Tanaka comes out strong, um, but I, I just think Ioka there, there's 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 too many nuances. That he, there's like the the, the, the the craftsmanship, the the skills of Ioka is too sharp. There's too many gears. I think he can beat him up from the mid range. I think he can press the action and get in and out on him and land coming and going like Teddy Atlas would say. And he can fight going backwards. Right, so he can make Tanaka, and Tanaka, um, Tanaka was fighting Jonathan Gonzalez. Even when he was making Gonzalez come backwards, he wasn't throwing first. He's always looking to counter. Right, he's gonna get picked apart. I, I, I think it's competitive, but the rounds are mostly one sided. I think Ioka wins a fairly wide decision. And I like uh, Tanaka. I have Tanaka in my top ten pound for pound. He's a great fighter. I just think Ioka is a special talent. You know, Ioka lost. Uh, a close decision in the Etienne, and besides that, he hasn't lost in the years. He's fought 25 times, and he's had 18 title fights. He's won both in four different weight classes. He's one of the great fighters. He was the hardest guy to leave out in our top 20 fighters of the last 20 years. Ioka's really, really good. Um, and if we make that list after this fight, Ioka may have to go on the list. He's that good. Uh, if he can beat Tanaka, he's beat another <laughs> great guy. And look, Ioka comes up from 105. 108, 112, 115, where he is now. He's not big for the weight class. I think, if anything, he's not going to be bigger than Tanaka just because he's fought the weight class before, and Tanaka hasn't. Um, I, I think Tanaka's going to be the bigger guy. Especially, like, you know, Tanaka's got those big calves and everything. Like, Tanaka's going to be the stronger guy for sure. And I think he's going to be physically bigger than in the ring. Um, but Ioka's timing and, and – that he can fight in all three distances, long range, mid range, and up close, and fighting coming backwards and, and forwards and side to side. There's so much more that I, I think he can stabilize Tanaka's come forward aggression. Look, and both guys are so accurate with their punches. I mean, Tanaka, what makes it, he's a great body puncher for one, and he's just, he lands right on the button, right on the button. He is so accurate and so precise with his, with his power shots. Um, Ioka's going to have to slip those shots. He can't get hit with too many of those because it's not like Palikta, where Palikta isn't as pinpoint accurate. Like He kind of misses wild uh, and, and things like that. Um, he, he's he got to – he can't keep getting hit by Tanaka, right? Like Tanaka is, is precise, but I think he's good enough where more often than not he can avoid those shots. Um, and he just has to stay off the ropes. Don't 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 let Tanaka back him into the ropes, right? Um, but he can fight the mid range, and he can he can let, land on the inside, and then score again, leave it, and he can do that. I, I, Ioka does so many things well. I, I'm leaning towards Ioka. I think most of y'all are gonna pick Tanaka, but let me know what y'all think. Who do you guys pick in those fights? I'm, in, in those two fights, I'm taking Loma by decision, very close decision over Tiafimo Lopez. And I'm taking, um, in, in a wider, in a unanimous decision, I'm taking Ioka um, over uh, Tanaka. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below from Texas. Oh, remember to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Share this on all forms of social media. Uh, find me on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all forms of social media at 3D Boxing Blog. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.